you sometimes put a lot of faith in people you don't know. And I'm currently going down a river in Venezuela. I don't know where we're going. to the new sunrise. Pass me a drink of maybe two. One for me and one for you. And we'll be free. Free. Morning in the Orinoco Delta. This landscape here is the Orinoco Delta in the north, uh, north uh, east of uh, Venezuela. 30,000 square kilometers, about the size of Belgium, with some of the world's most amazing wildlife. Piranhas in every river. If you cut yourself, don't go swimming. There is the second ever piranha fish I caught. The first one I caught was in the Piranha River in Brazil. Macaws, monkeys. Dolphins, all in this beautiful natural landscape. There's nothing in between what we are, what we see. There's nothing in between. Here's a bit of trivia for you the Orinoco River that feeds the Orinoco Delta here sends the third most amount of fresh water to the ocean behind only the Amazon and the Congo River. There you go. Just take one last look around. In every place feels like a familiar town. The indigenous people of this region are the Waraol people. They've been here for over 7,000 years and have a distinct language group. There are three distinct language groups. Venezuela with a number of subgroups. But the linguists say that the Waraol people's um, language derives from that of the border regions between Brazil and Paraguay, Paraguay which is many thousands of kilometres away. Give you a sense of how far people have moved. The Waraol people here have full land ownership rights in a sense more developed than the native title we have in Australia and indeed in the schools it is by law required to teach the children both in Spanish and in the native language which is both a good idea for preserving native language but a problem in finding the right number of high quality teachers who are bilingual. Here in Orinoco Eco Camp the facilities are right on the water. In fact, at high tide, you sleep in a little hut over the water. Uh, no hot water or anything like that. It's not exactly a luxury camp, but it is uh, good staff, good guides, um, and gives you the real feel of being in the middle of the jungle because we're in the middle of the jungle. Plenty of mosquitoes in this jungle and damn glad for the deet. Let me show you something else about Venezuela which is kind of good for the traveller and not so good for the Venezuelans. It's really cheap here. And the reason it's cheap here is because this one, two, three, four, five, six is worth about sixty dollars. That's worth about ten dollars. That total is worth about 60 because of the collapse in the local currency. Viva the revolution, Hugo Chavez. And while the Orinoco Delta might not be as well known as other places in Venezuela, it is stunning and worth visiting. But where we're going next is well known. Okay, this is one of the bucket list things Angel Falls. Carlos and me, we're going for a fly. the night. Dream on. Dream on. Baby, that's all right. If you want to dream, dream. It's okay. You can dream all through the day. I said, dream, dream. It's all right. You can dream all through the night. Keep on moving if you gotta go just as long as you stay with the flow be somewhere you wanna be keep on grooving cause that's the key Kamena airport just the angel falls and oh, that's
that's a bucket list thing gone and it was really good. Okay, you could be a little bit disappointed because there wasn't much water flowing down it because of El Nino and the drought, but we knew all of that and it was still there and it was still fantastic. <laughs> Landscape. <laughs> This area of Venezuela near the Angel Falls is home of the Pemon people. This is the traditional housing design of the Pemon people and you might be wondering why it's looking deserted. Well, it's because they're actually building this as a movie set. In many ways this reminds me of the design of the traditional Mongolian gear. Round, the families live here that hang their hammocks up. Spectacular, and it reminds me in many ways of some parts of Australia and also some parts of Africa. And considering it's the same uh, latitude, more or less, as northern Australia, it's not that much of a surprise. I'll grant you I've not been to Caracas yet. So Venezuela hasn't been as people have described it unfriendly, dangerous, dirty and ugly. It's actually been really friendly and stunningly beautiful. Oh, can you imagine something better? Angel Falls is that way, the Venezuelan jungle is that way, there's almost no one here in this river. Magnificent. Okay, this is an Australian speaking here, but the sand, the white sand on this river beach is some of the best I've ever had my feet in. What do you do after a swim? Lunch. You know, the Kanema National Park is more than just Angel Falls, it's World Heritage protected because of the tabletop mountains, the lovely rivers and the amazing nature. I'm here at the Sapo Waterfall. It's spectacular, surrounded by this beautiful green plains, mountains off in the distance, table mountains, rugged rocks to set the water churning and in the wet season it all comes flowing over this huge drop but now in the dry season it's missing one thing water so in the dry season Sapo Falls might not have water but plenty of other waterfalls do and the frog smiles at me my dog and she falls on me I could tell him what I said water about him and what's up just like on the This one is Ancha Waterfall and it makes me think of B Khan in my office 10 years ago when I say something stupid and she says Ancha. We're currently right behind the Ancha Waterfall. Some of the people here have a magnificent view from their house. I want to buy this one. Having an after day walking beer, but check out the setting. The only downside about this place is this is the most expensive beer in all of Venezuela. It's a thousand Bolivar, which is about $1.20. And just to put that in perspective, petrol in this country is about one Bolivar 19 a litre. 
that's about one eighth of a cent a litre for petrol. And on money, I have a two Bolivar note, which has got to go down as the lowest value piece of money I have ever had. Because two Bolivar is worth about one quarter of one cent in a note. I am so coming back to Venezuela. So I'm here in Colombia. Oh yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, we're, we're going to do the video. The, the Dumaguete video. This is, Dum this is Dumaguete, but in Colombia. Uh, and, and Maya. As Ollie said, it's a Sunday afternoon and we're in exotic Dumaguete Airport. Isn't that right, Ollie? Dumaguete. Dumaguete. I'm in the Gold Museum here in Bogota, in Colombia, looking at all of these fine and intricate pieces of gold work that were done throughout the history here. And you can understand why when the Spanish got here, they just went nuts raping and pillaging the place. The amount of gold that was mined and crafted and shaped here is beyond belief, and this is just a handful of what's left over. Most of it was melted down to pay for armadas. Some of this gold work is really, really intricate when you think this was all made without modern technology and tools. Gaza National Park in Colombia, outside Bogota. With Ollie. I'm going to do Dumaguete again. <laughs> Don't do Maggetti. You've got to go to Dumaguete. Ooh, so we're out at uh, about three and a half thousand metres. And Ollie and I are a little short of breath. We're going to claim it's the altitude and not middle age. Good luck with that. This is really pretty. Sort of rainforesty, jungly type stuff. Not too big at you. So for about the last 40 years, local authorities have shut the streets in Bogota on Sundays and allowed people to come out and ride. So the main avenues and the roads feeding it are all closed and people come out to have fun, stalls, bike riding, the whole bit. We should do that in Melbourne. One of the other things about Bogota, in fact Colombia in general, is there are lots of police around. Maybe that's why it feels so safe. We've paused here outside the bullfighting ring here in uh, Bogota. Now, the current mayor and the previous mayor didn't like bullfighting, so they tried to stop it. The courts overruled them, so what they then said is, well, it's a civic bullfighting ring which is under repair and closed for repair. If I'm wrong and God exists, heaven's going to be something like behind this gate, a coffee factory. Of course, the two most famous exports in Colombia are cocaine and coffee. I have to try at least one of them. Our bike tour now about to take us through the edge of the red light district in, uh, in Bogota. Prostitution within certain zones is legal. While Bogota has surprised me on a number of things about safety, security, etc., one thing it's not is it's not a pretty city architecturally speaking. Okay, this is Tejo, the official game of Columbia. Oh, yeah. I'm 
was good, she was hot, stealing everything she got I was born, she was over the worst of it Give me a kill, thank you dear, bring your sister over here Let her dance with me just for the hell of it I'm in Cartagena in northern Colombia up on the Caribbean coast. Cartagena was founded in 1533 by Pedro de Hedria and this was used by the Spanish as their main port and shipping all of the gold back to Spain after they stole it from the Indians. So this town was attacked and sieged often, four times in the 16th century alone. The most famous being in 1586 by Sir Francis Drake, meaning the Spanish, using this as their main export hub for gold, decided to fortify the city and build these great walls that remain today, which is why Cartagena is a World Heritage Protected City. One name that sticks out amongst probably all others is Pablo Escobar, the great drug dealer who died about 20 years ago, ran the Medellin cartels, built up an enormous wealth and created great amounts of violence. When you look at the flag of Colombia, gold, blue and red, it kind of sums that up. Gold symbolises the gold, the enormous wealth this country has, the natural resources plundered first by the Spanish and the agriculture manipulated by Escobar. The blue because it's the only country in South America that has a coast both on the Pacific and the uh, Atlantic, the Atlantic via the Caribbean Sea. And red symbolising the violence of not just the colonialism of the Spanish, but also its modern history. But now, 20 years after the destruction of the Medellin cartels, you see a lot more colour, a lot more life, and a lot more vibrance in Colombia. And here in Cartagena, you've got great restaurants, cafes, and these beautiful colonial buildings. Oh, it's San Felipe Castle, outside or in the middle of the town of Cartagena. This was built in the early 1600s, or started in the early 1600s, took 150 years to complete, and it was Sir Francis Drake's attack, that famous pirate, his attack on Cartagena that inspired the Spanish to build this. It's said to be the largest fortification of the Spanish Empire outside of Europe and it was never defeated. Started in 1657 and the first fortifications built in only a year by African slaves. And with the wide sweeping views over the plain, overlooking the harbour, you can see how it would have been very difficult, in fact impossible, to take this castle. Behind me here is the Inquisition Museum in Cartagena reminding us that Spain ruled this place for hundreds of years and for over 200 of those there was a permanent body in government to rule out or weed out the heretics and the non-Catholic believers using torture, punishment, burning at the stake. When you step further away from the mainstream you come into the markets down near the uh, more slummy areas. Hello! People are also very very friendly. I mean it feels like a a developing country then, but uh, doesn't feel in any way unsafe. And I've got to tell you, it's really surprised me. You know, I have a pretty good antenna for what is not safe, and I don't feel unsafe in any way at all in this place. It has really surprised me. It feels like a, a mid-level economy. It's growing, and then again, it's nearly 20 years since the end of the troubles with the. Uh, Escobar's drug cartels, there's still trouble with the smaller cartels and don't get me wrong, there's violence especially if you go into the slums but the normal areas of this place feels much safer than many of the countries have been to in the world with beautiful coasts, beautiful beaches and 
protect, you know, nature that is World Heritage protected and cultural buildings that are World Heritage protected, come to Colombia, seriously. Welcome to Isla Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Island. The main island of the Galapagos chain. Galapagos, famous for Charles Darwin and the origin of the species, where he didn't say survival of the fittest. The Galapagos island chain is governed by Ecuador. It's part of Ecuador. Most of it is declared a national park. So you're only allowed to go to very specific parts unless you've got some very good scientific reason. Even in these parts though, there is some really incredible jungle. A lot of bird and animal species like the famous Galapagos iguana, which show an incredible lack of human fear. You have the sea lions that even wild ones were basking next to the pool in my hotel. The Galapagos tortoise is the largest species of tortoise in the world. One of only two areas where the giant tortoise still lives in the world here in Galapagos and also in Aldabra which is east of Tanzania in Africa. There are 15 species of giant tortoise. 10 still exist today. The 11th had only one known example which was Lonesome George who died in 2012. The giant tortoise can live up to 170 years in captivity and well over 100 years in the wild. Charles Darwin studied the giant tortoise when he was here and looked at the differences between the subspecies and that helped define his theory of evolution. I was saying earlier that Charles Darwin didn't coin the phrase survival of the fittest. He actually didn't. That was coined by an economist, Spencer, in comparing his economic theories with Charles Darwin's theories on evolution he talked about the survival of the fittest. Darwin liked the phrase so much that he incorporated it into the fifth edition of his book. Darwin's theories, now known as survival of the fittest or the theory of evolution, wasn't about the biggest eating the smallest. It was actually about which species was able to reproduce itself and more fit for reproduction. Now, it wasn't just the giant tortoise that's worried about reproduction and birds that have nice colourful feathers to attract the opposite sex. Of course humans are well known for dressing up to attract the opposite sex. And my hat doesn't help. I'm just at the breakfast table watching some pelicans catch their breakfast. Geologically speaking, Galapagos Islands are relatively young and are very volcanic. Uh, islands are created, or mid-ocean islands are often created when the Earth's continental plate shift, shift over a hot space in the mantle and they send magma up to create islands like Hawaii. Well, Galapagos is created that way as well. Many old volcanic formations here, including old lava tunnels, which are formed, as I descend into one, which are formed when lava cools or flows subterraneanly and cools on the outside, creating a tunnel through which the lava flowed. And you can see here, this is the edge of what looks like the inside of a giant barbecue because it's full of volcanic rock. Uh, and you can just imagine hot magma flowing through here at an enormous speed as the rock around it cooled. Many of the islands of the Galapagos chain don't have rainforest as such. It's more mist forest where a constant mist comes in dampening the soil. This really is beautiful. A 
I really do like being on my own in the jungle. I'm now standing on the rim of an ancient caldera, the mouth of a volcano. There are two of these next to each other here on Santa Cruz. And down there is unique life, unique plants and trees that exist nowhere else in the world except down there. You can walk around the uh, cliff edge, but going down you need ropes. And you step right up to the lip of this caldera and reach out and look over this huge drop down into this floor of all this jungle which you just love to explore. I wonder how you get down there or get permission to get down there. Now in Galapagos not all the good stuff is on land. Some of it is underwater. Tainted picture of us now forever forget Cause little missy misery set foot in the ocean but never the sea I'll bury her into the ground next to the old Perhaps the last thing I should say about Quito, surrounded in this beautiful little hotel, is you know Quito, the capital of Ecuador, was one of the first, or in the first batch, of 17 places that was put on the UNESCO World Heritage Area. Maybe you should come and have a look. That's it from Ecuador. <laughs>